Good day folks, welcome back to yet another episode of To The Back of Beyond. Last episode saw Kelly myself in the Michalisberg for her best friend's wedding. This week we're back in Cape Town. The weather outside, it is foul, it is rainy, it is windy, it's not go outside weather. In our past episodes, we've always promised you guys that we would cover with you what we carry on board the Yamaha Super Tenere, Bumbles. And this week we're going to cover just that. Guys, we're going to cover with you all the equipment that we carry on our tail bag, our left and our right pannier bags, left and right OSHA dry bags, the tank bag, the front handlebar bag, and then the left and the right crash bar bag. Guys, with that also being said, please remember our requirements is not the same as your requirements. We're just going to merely cover with you what we carry two up on the motorcycle. And remember everyone's luggage systems and bike setups, everything is different. So without further ado, Let's jump right into this video. Alright folks, so first up we have got the Turkana Duffalo Soft Luggage Tail Bag. This is the bag that we put right at the back of the motorcycle just behind Kel's back and it's tied down with two rock straps that go over the front. I'll show you exactly the positioning of this bag a little bit later. Inside this bag is what we carry all our more sensitive items and stuff that we don't want to get damaged should the bike topple over to the left or to the right. So all our bags are waterproof, but this one is just particularly for our more personal and sensitive equipment and electronic equipment. Let's take a look what's inside the bag. All right guys, another thing to note with this style bag, it is a soft style bag and it's got some beautiful carry handles and then also the molly system where you can attach uh, more, more bags to it. For example, what's on this side is our bottle carriers and also we put in small uh, tripods inside these little bags. But you, it's more designed for carrying bottles, like bottles of oil. We also carry inside this one our, uh, our fuel bottles a small one and then also a, a medium one depending on how long the trip's going to be for but most of the times we carry the, the slightly larger fuel bottle we only use um, benzene it's a nice clean of burning fuel but we'll cover this um, what we carry and burn with this a little bit later all right let's open up the bag and take a look at what's inside what we carry inside the bag i'm going to take out um, each bag individually so we can see what is actually inside the bag okay firstly we carry our tent pegs and poles this goes over the top of the bag this is for our tent that we that we carry in our one of our panniers moving on we carry also a personal bag this is carried okay this one's empty at the moment but inside here we carry all our toiletries toothbrushes toothpaste contact lens solution cleaner Deodorants, everything goes inside this little bag and it doesn't go very much bigger. If we're going on longer trips, of course, the bag might be a little bit bigger than this, but this is our general toiletry bag that goes inside. Moving on, we have got an electronics box or electronics bag. Inside the electronics bag, we carry the following. Okay, generally we carry a variety of cables with us for all the different charging for our phones, cameras. There's just a little silica gel just to keep everything inside dry. Um, also again, some more charging cables for the camera charging. Uh, USB port, this is, we're gonna delve more into the, uh, the, the power that we carry with us on the motorcycle. So USB chargers, power banks, cigarette lighter charger point for phones and for the camera and then also tiny little light that we put inside the tent it's a white light amber light red light the last two these ones are excellent for bugs prevention of bugs flying around and inside your tent because it's a low emitting light so this is what we carry in the tent then also we carry this magnificent little contraption this is what we use for blowing up our our mattress it's just a tiny little flex tail air pump this thing saves so much time it's usb chargeable and then we can also use it for blowing the fire if the fire is um, not burning nicely so usually just attach that there's usually enough power on this guy to pump up our mattress four to five times before we actually have to um, recharge it so 
beautiful little contraption makes life so much more easier at the end of a hard day's ride you don't have to try and blow up the mattress with your breath so that is our electronics kit and our electronics bag moving further on inside here we carry these beautiful little um, bags also bought through uh, Cape Union Mart um, small little comp uh, compartment bags this is what we usually carry food in now you might be wondering geez what do you guys actually eat but we'll in another episode we'll carry on and we'll talk to you guys about the MREs that we actually fit inside here for medium-sized trips where we don't want to rush to the shops to try and grab some food and we just want to relax so we'll cover this one in another episode because this is a, a whole episode on itself so we'll cover that in the next one inside here we have also another bag as you can see they're all different colors this one's what we call our gas bag so inside this bag let's move this one out the way for a second now so inside this one we carry a lighter a variety of lighters and then also this is for the MSR uh, dragonfly this is just the wind block or wind wind deferrer so that goes around the actual MSR gas kit and then inside this bag we have the following we've got our MSR pump uh, that goes into the dragonfly this is just pots and pans scourer or detergent to wash the pots and pans. We bought this one, I think, in Zambia a couple of years ago, and we still got enough in here. This stuff is so concentrated that it lasts forever, and we've had this for about three years for scrubbing and washing pots and pans. Anyway, we could find a little gap. We always put in a, in a plug so that we've got extra plugs to go with our electronics kit. And then inside here is our MSR Dragonfly stove. This thing is amazing. It's a multi-fuel stove. Again, we'll put this all up for you guys to see if you're not familiar with the multi-burner stove. Um, also another great piece of equipment. We used to carry gas with us, but with a multi-fuel stove, you can always find three different types of fuels in any country that you're traveling. And the stuff that, that cooks amazing. So we'll cover this also in one of our upcoming videos on, our, um, on how we cook and what we cook with. So yeah, MSR Dragonfly. Then also inside here we've got Fairy Lights, Kel's favorite, so we usually put this up with a USB um, power bank and we've got a little bit of extra ambient lighting inside the, uh, the campsite that we're at. So that is for lighting and for ambience. So that is our, or our, gas, our gas bag. As you can see it's all modular that fits inside the bag so that everything fits let's have a look what else we've got inside here um guys pots and pans this is our kitchen it's pretty much what it says is inside here we carry all our a variety of different size pots as you can see we carry a large pot and a medium sized pot and then just some dish cloths and dish cans inside that at the bottom of every one we put these little foam inserts to stop the vibration the rattle and the rolling inside the bag two little coffee cups metal metal coffee cups we've had these forever and once again um, salt and pepper and scouring scouring pad then also right at the bottom a small little cutting board and then inside the front of the bag We got some spoons and knives, larger sporks or forks, and a can opener. Um, also, advisable to carry is a cork, cork bottle screw. So that's basically everything that goes inside of the pots and pans bag. All right, next we have got these guys. All right, so each one of these is just a, a sock. And then inside we have memory foam pillows so basically both of these are the same and then that will you can see it's starting to blow up by itself and then that's our memory foam pillows we carry of course one for me and one for Cal all right next we have got 
this guy. Not essential to carry, but if you've got one, um, carry it, get the best footage. It's just a small little DJI Spark drone controller and batteries. So battery, 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 controller, and the drone itself with the, um, the, the cables required to fly it on the remote control. Like I said, you don't, not everybody has a drone or carries a drone, so I've downscaled the bag that the drone came in into a much smaller bag so that it fits in and also protects the drone. All right, then lastly, we carry, this bag is now empty. Another bag very similar to the one that the drones carried in, so you can see it's all very modular and everything works in. Guys, this is what I use as I unfortunately suffer with a symptom called sleep apnea. So inside here is the CPAP machine that we used, uh, well I use so that Cal can get a good night's sleep and I don't snore the place down. So I carry a CPAP machine. You might be wondering how the hell do you power that? That will cover just now. So CPAP machine inside the bag. So guys, basically everything that we've covered here is what comes out of the tail bag. Let's move on to the, the pannier bags. All right, guys, next up, we carry in the left back pannier is the Vanga Halo Pro 300 tent, a lightweight tent for, uh, for packing. Um, like I said before, our tent poles and pegs and everything for the Vanga Halo tent, it goes into our back tail bag, just on top of everything on the inside. And then this one is stuffed right at the bottom of the pannier bag, um, inside a, a waterproof uh, bag to keep it dry. Uh, excellent tent, nice lightweight. It's a three-man tent and um, I'm going to post some pictures on places that we've been and so you can see what the, the setup of this tent looks like. Um, use my hand as a reference for the size wise, but it's, I think it weighs just in over, just a little over three kilograms. Beautiful tent, um, nice vegetables, but I'll post some pictures of the tent setup so that you guys can have a look. Okay, then next up that sits on top of the tent will be our Nature Hike double inflatable sleeping pad. An amazing piece of equipment. This is a double mattress. Uh, nice and comfortable, keeps us off the ground, makes for an awesome night's sleep when you've had a long, hard day on the bike. So there's the, uh, the information. Nature Hike double inflatable sleeping pad, 9.5 centimeters thick. When it's pumped up, a little flex tail is what we use to pump up this. It takes about two and a half minutes to pump up. Nice and uh, nice and sturdy and comfortable. And then next up, we have got two Desert Fox uh, collapsible chairs. One for Cal and one for myself. Very easy to set up with the chairs pot that you sit on. And then inside here is all the aluminum or aluminum poles that um, sets up the, the chairs. Awesome, comfortable chairs, light packable. It also goes inside on top of the, the sleeping mattress on the, the left pannier. Right, then next up we have got the base tube top 1.0. I bought this one a couple of months ago. Um, it's nice and small as you can see in comparison to my hands. It also packs up very, very tiny. But this also goes into the, the left pannier bag. And we carry this one with us for an emergency purpose so that at least we've got shade. We can always just throw up the top. Also, if we get caught out in the rain for any reason, um, no matter what it is, we can then use this top. This is a small top. Like I said, I got it online for I think about 400 Rand and um, it comes with us everywhere we go. This also goes in the left back pannier and it's stuffable in between the, uh, the chairs and also the sleeping mattress. So let's do a quick overview of everything that is in the left back pannier. So folks, that is everything that is carried inside the left back pannier. As you can see, the tent, the top, the two chairs, and then also the sleeping mattress. So inside the left back pannier is what all this equipment will go into. All right guys, moving on to the right pannier at the back, we have got our clothing. This is just the, the dry waterproof bag that um, all the, the contents slide inside. So let's take a look at what we carry inside the right rear pannier. 
So inside the right rear pannier, this is, will be all our clothing. As you can see, this is um, another compression bag or modular bag that we use. This one doesn't care, is, has not got the contents that we carry, but generally that would be the size of it, maybe just a little bit thicker. Um, inside here is where we would carry all our, our clothes. So one side of the, the pannier would, or the, the compression sack will be for Kelly's clothes and my clothes combined. And then there's also another section at the back for, for more clothing that can be put inside there. Um, the nice thing about this, it keeps your clothes in a, in a modular shape so it can easily fit into and nicely fit into the, the dry bag for the pannier. So inside here will be all our, our clothes and um, you'll see there's a little bit of uh, space on the top over here because this thing rolls down three times before you actually seal it with clips so it does stay waterproof. Um, there's always a little bit of space in between to slide anything else, a little bit extra uh, stuff that we do carry. If we do carry anything like maybe a pair of flip flops or whatever, towels also can be fits on the top, those little dry cam towels can also be placed on the top inside, keeping everything nice and snug and dry. All right, and then also in the same pannier that will slide up against the side of the pannier where the clothes are, is our grid. So inside here is a barbecue grid. Um, also some fire lighters and everything too. So we also carry with us a, a grid for cooking meats and everything else that we require. It's nice and small. And then like I say, that will slide in the same pannier, the right side pannier with our clothes, but not inside the bag, it'll be on the outside of the pannier up against the motorcycle side. So also nice lightweight little barbecue grid. While we're here, also say hello to this guy. He's our little foster kitty, his name's Fu. And Fu is looking for a home right now. So he's chilling with us until he finds a home. So this is Mr. Fu. Okay, moving on to the OSA dry packs, the 25 liter OSA dry packs. These are what we put on top of our left and our right pannier. So inside this one, I'm gonna uh, divulge with you guys what's inside here. So we do carry two. One for the left, one for the right. Inside this one over here, we usually carry a variety of stuff like our hiking shoes, extra uh, food, water bottles, or whatever it is that goes inside here. So basically that would be the size that both of them come up to. Very nice waterproof bags, also that can be compressed and sealed off too. So everything inside just stays dry. Especially in this bag, we want the things inside here to stay dry. Let's have a look what we've got inside here. We carry our sleeping bags we use the these bags nice it's one of our upgrades it's the amplify sleeping bags so there's um, two sleeping bags easily stuff into here and also if we want to carry a sheet we can carry a sheet for the uh the sleeping mattress too so let me move take another one out here so that is our sleeping bags that we carry inside the osa OSA dry packs. Um, before we were always putting our sleeping bags back into the little stuff sacks, but because of the size, it's very awkward to try and put them into the pannier bags. So we decided, you know what, we're just gonna take them out of their bags, use OSA dry packs, and then just stuff everything inside. It also makes a lot of room inside for other small equipment pieces, maybe a camera box or whatever it is we can still put inside here. So we also carry two OSA dry packs left and right side with a 25 litre capacity and everything that goes inside these bags stays dry. All right, moving up to the front of the bike, this is the tank bag. The tank bag right now has got the waterproof cover because by the bag by itself is not waterproof. So during rainy um, episodes, We'll usually put the raincoat cover over the top of the tank bag. Let's take off the cover so you can see what the rest of the bag looks like. All right, so it is a 20 liter Givy tank bag with the clip lock system at the bottom and uh, 20 liters capacity. Let's have a look what's inside the 20 liter Givy tank bag. So inside we have got normal foam inserts just to protect what's in at the bottom. Firstly, at the top here, we've got a little documentation sleeve. 
This will be where we slide all our passports and bike documentation and other paperwork that we don't want to get uh, damaged or wet. Also, the tank bag is easily removable so we can take all our very personal belongings and most important belongings with us if we don't want to leave them on the bike if we go into the shops or anywhere in particular. So this is detachable, very easy, takes about less than three seconds to remove the tank bag off of the actual tank lock. So inside here, this is what we've been talking about. This is what powers all our equipment and recharges all our cameras. It is the EcoFlow River 2. It's got a Sega type port um, DC socket, the normal USB type A's and then also the USB type C and then also the AC sockets for three prong plugs. The nice thing about this thing, it is also chargeable on the bike uh, through the, the solar panel and also it can be charged through solar panels. So we do have the normal cable that goes with this one that goes to the Segrid lighter that can charge the Echo Flow while we're riding. It takes about three hours to charge up fully, three to four hours, which is usually a, a our rides can take as long as four to five hours. So through riding, we can always make sure that we are charged up on the Echo Flow and um, we have got power in camp. It is also rechargeable by a wall socket too. So this thing, little thing weighs about just over three kilos, which is very light for the bag. But at least we know when we are traveling, we've got power to charge up all of our cameras, drones, CPAP machine. This thing can run the CPAP machine for about three, three to four nights before we have to fully charge it again. So it's a powerful little piece of equipment that we do take with us. And it's also been a, a game changer for us the Ecoflow River 2. All right, let's move into the bottom of the tank bag. So this is another foam insert for vibration so that it protects the, the Ecoflow. In the bottom of the bag, in this little section, which is the curve part of it, sits another good piece, important piece of equipment. Everything's covered in, in plastic bags just to protect what's inside. It is electronic. Folks, inside this one, we have got the Lumia Pro smart pump to pump up our tires important piece of equipment to have it also very accurate it, you can put in exactly the amount of pressure that you want in your tires front and back and it's connected via the shredder valve so that also goes inside the tank bag so it's easily accessible so that we can pump up our tires when and when it is required okay next up we have got the handlebar bag this is the Takana peli pouch so inside this bag, we'll carry small stuff like pens, small pieces of paper, whatever we require. Also our little our fuel slips can go inside here. Um, in the main compartment area, this is where we'll carry our cameras and yeah, small GoPros, small batteries. Also small cables can be fit inside it. Extra, um, extra charging cables and it is waterproof or splash proof. So it's got a whole bunch of small compartments that you can put extra stuff inside of it too. So this one is what is attached onto the handlebars all via Velcro. So it's also easily removable. And that's what goes on our, on our handlebars, the Takana Peli Pouch. All right, last of the equipment, we have got the crash bar bags we've got the crash bar bag for the left side and the right side we're going to delve into or jump into what we carry in the crash bar bags um, these are what fits via velcro onto the actual bars or the crash bars themselves and um, let's cover what we have got first in the the right hand the right hand side crash bar bag so guys always important on every trip self-explanatory the first aid kits inside here we carry of course all the the requirements for a first aid um, scenario um, it's a little bit empty right now because we carry a little bit more extra drugs and painkillers and everything else so all our medication goes on this side and then also all the first aid equipment on the other side of the, the bag um, we are going to be in the near future upgrading our crash bar bags um, We'll cover that in another video when we do get the crash bar bag. So this is what we carry on the right hand side is the first aid kits. In the left hand side, um, another important piece of equipment too. Again, you can see these little bags are absolutely amazing. So inside here is a kit, a tool kit that I've put together for, for the bike. Um, it's everything that we would need to do, general maintenance and uh, roadside repairs on the motorcycle. Everyone, everyone's tool kit's gonna be different. So always advise, try and get a toolkit together 
that suits your bike and your needs and everything that you would require for it. So this thing, very lightweight, but uh, it's a necessity to carry, especially on long trips or any trip where you might need to have tools. So inside the bag, we've got the following. We've got a variety of small um, ratchet pieces or ratchet set um, sizes inside the this little piece, this little container. Let's move this out the way. We've got a set of Allen keys of different sizes. That's part of the, the toolkit where you can snap on all different size um, adjustments. Electrical tape, you never know when you need that one. And then of course everything that we carry is wrapped up in, um, in cloth just to prevent vibration and, and noises that you don't want. So guys, inside here we carry the following. For the motorcycle we've got a normal piece of uh, clamps, a little T-bar, a uh, little extra extension, small tiny ratchet and then also the this piece is what I use for removing the, the spark plugs. Um, inside the rest of the bag carry another extra cloth, just a larger breaker bar for removing wheels and other big heavy tight nuts and bolts, we use that one. And of course inside here we have got puncture repair kits and some extra extra small little uh, spanners that's required. I put these inside this bag just because these are sharp and I don't want them puncturing through uh, the bag itself. Then also on the front, on the, this little section, is the, the tire repairs in case we do get a puncture. And then also a valve remover and a whole bunch of spare uh, fuses and then also some uh, valve cores so that if we do have to remove valves for any reason we've got some extra spares. Use this plenty time or once or twice before so it's always good carry the right amount of spare fuses that is uh, suitable for your motorcycle. So guys that about wraps up everything that we carry on the motorcycle. Um, again like I said before it's not this is not by means the go-to list of what you should be carrying but it's a general indication of what we carry. If, again, any questions, leave them in the comment section below. All right, folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of To The Back and Beyond. We really hope you enjoyed and thank you very much for sticking around and watching right to the end. If you'd like to support the channel, please hit the like and subscribe button below. It's that simple and hit that bell notification to be informed when we do our next uploads. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.